anyway, let's move on here. We have news from Resident Advisor regarding Ibiza, which is an interesting development uh, regarding what's going to happen post-COVID. I think if if ever there was a scene that needed a bit of a lockdown and it needed a bit of a cultural reset, it was Ibiza. I haven't been, obviously, but um, it's just not necessarily a vibe that I kind of uh, have ever wanted to go to. I don't really see the appeal of going somewhere where everyone's playing on a lineup that I could see and play in the, in the nightclub here in London. But I get that the allure and the folklore, oh yeah, I get the folklore behind Ibiza, how important it is to the scene, um, you know, uh, what it means to the people that actually lived there and that were support or that traveled there when it first started popping off. I get this relevance and everything, but over the last few years, you know, you have to say it's kind of lost its way. Um, in the ch in the chase commercial, the, 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 yeah, the chase commercial success, um, clubs competing with each other for lineups, um, DJs uh, fighting over DJs, which leads to this weird kind of exclusivity deals where certain DJs can't play in certain clubs; they have to play only in certain places here. Back to back parties, exorbitant prices and drinks, entry fees, really corrupt and shady security that are in cahoots with the local police, um, local councilmen and politicians also. Um, allegedly taking some backhanded bribes that really shady stuff happens in that scene overall but I think the lockdown has maybe been a blessing in disguise for Ibiza because what it's done is that it's effectively forced out that international market that they've always been chasing and it's made them hopefully which all scenes are kind of having to go through because you know with the restrictions in travel each scene is going to have to regardless where you are in, the, in Europe you're going to have to really concentrate or in the, even in the world you have to concentrate on cultivating your local scene um, for the time being until the travel restrictions are lifted and then by then you might have actually changed the way you kind of program your club in general anyway going forward so i think it's going to be a good thing going um for the scene in general but this is an article from resident advisor says that could the pandemic burst i beef's bubble um, it says here with tourism expected to plummet this summer local dealers and promoters are coming together to make the most of the tough situation musically it might be just what the island needs carlos hawthorne investigates so there's a point here that I want to quickly talk about. Duh, 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 duh. It says here that this is what happens when a thing gets greedy. Yes. So there's a point here about it being greedy. Where is it? Duh, 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 duh. Duh, 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 duh. Where is the scene getting greedy? I should have made a point about it. Duh, duh, duh. Pedro Sanchez up in this. So, um, yeah, stop me here. So July onwards remains the great unknown. It said last Saturday, Spain's Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez assumed nerves nationwide by announcing that foreigners will be allowed to visit with no quarantine period from July. Ryanair and Lufthansa have confirmed flights from the UK to Germany. This is good news for Ibiza, um, which receives millions of tourists every summer. But will people come? Um, what kind of party scene will they find? The open, and this is a quote from Gola, said the open air venues on the island would be more likely to be able to host a party, as I mentioned previously. I think open air venues, if you live in a sunnier climate and the COVID hasn't ravaged your country as it has other places and they, they ease the lockdown, I think you're going to be more able, you're going to be probably, there's probably more chance of you doing open air raves as if it's going back to nightclubs, you know, just because they're in closed environments. I think clubs, I think event bookers or promoters will be able to kind of get away with co Telling some of the um, the kind of capacity limits by putting things, you know, by saying things are open air, um, you know, in the nightclub, just open the gut, the back door. I assume you can kind of quote it being open air, put a gazebo out there, and you can probably fill a lot more people. Um, it says here, um, like everyone else, he's been pulling uh, out feelers to several venues as he waits for more information. It says here, I think what will happen now to quite a big degree is that we'll all come together and you'll have more unity. I definitely agree with that. It continues here, it says all the uncertainty has created an opening for many DJs and promoters like the Costa, who's already on the island. The pandemic has presented them with a unique and unexpected opportunity to throw parties without having to compete with the biggest names in dance music usually this luxury is afforded to them in the off season which is really sad isn't it i guess when it's the peak season all the big djs get there right solomon the seth Troxlers, the ricardo Velo bosses all those guys that play deep house right patrick topin or yeah all that sort of crew michael bibby i'm assuming that's during the peak season and then all the local guys there who have been kind of holding the scene down when it's outside the peak season have to just run away somewhere else or just stay at home because no one wants to hear them play right everyone wants to go see these big big ticket people playing at these venues which is a sad thing because from what i remember from reading all the profiles and features on that beef a part of the reason why people 
went was for the Balearic vibe of the island, right? It's for the ambience, right? It's for the vibe overall of the place, less so about the lineups. It might, it might have been even more so to do with the clubs, right? Or the, or the individuals that used to go to those clubs that weren't DJs, right? Some of the kind of legendary figures that were the mainstays of that scene. Who's the guy that was um, friendly with George Michael that died recently? Who was kind of the big proponents out there? There was loads of those kind of figures, right? Then suddenly it kind of changed to go from all these big super clubs. Then it changed to these big promotion uh, nightclub events whatever they called and then it went to these big ticket DJs right who are just that's why people go there right uh, Solomon's doing a fucking a uh, 10 year residency in Abifa let's go and see him play sometime uh, which is a real shame because I think what is needed in most scenes is a balance no one's saying you should just prom hire only local DJs and promoters but let's have a balance there's no need there's no point of having all the same DJs that play all over the world playing exactly at your venue all the time every dur during the peak seasons why not pick some people who've specifically fit the vibe and then balance them off with some local talent just so you can give the punters or the people that go to that kind of place a bit more of a diverse experience because i'd imagine if you're an older electronic music fan right i'd imagine if and you're familiar with ib and you've been there you no know, for many many years you would have you probably feel a bit out of place going to like a pasha i'd just imagine or it's like a dc10 probably right circle loco you probably feel a bit out of place isn't it because the demographic is much younger but if you're able to kind of promote that rave and a more kind of let's say quote unquote mature party that's also done to a high level that's where the real beauty of the scene comes out and you know what might happen you might actually have new fresh talent actually moving you know to ibifa to kind of you know uh give their career a little bit of a boost or to kind of gain a different understanding of the scene. Because you don't really hear people do that much, right? You hear people move into Berlin or, you know, go into uh, Holland or move into Bristol. Um, but you don't really hear people moving to Ibiza to pursue music unless they're, you know, they're older folk who kind of have made some money and they want to maybe, get, you know, kind of uh, wind down in retirement out there. But you don't really hear young guys, young guys and girls going out there and really kind of making that scene pop, which is what they're really missing out on. It can continue here. It says that, in the article, it says Jamie O'Gor Jamie O'Gorman has been running events on the island since 2000. Jamie Jones, then flying for a space, was a resident at his first party before the virus hit. O'Gorman split his time between DJing, promoting, event consulting, and managing a creative agency. A lot of that work is now cancelled or on hold, so he's redirecting his energy into Social Local, a new initiative aiming to responsibly reboot the event economy using local talent, which is a great initiative, and I love that idea. Um, he hopes to announce the first events in the next few weeks. It's run by a group of local promoters you said spanish english french and irish um it's a social club so we know who's coming to the event it's not good it's not people who have been traveling and are in danger of spreading any kind of illnesses we work together and share a database there's no point competing against each other that's fucking beautiful look at that i'd be for absolutely gorgeous setting in it um this last lineup jumps off the page and the just a, uh, yeah, so this other turn the page. Um, from May to October, around a dozen venues host parties seven nights a week. Fuck me. What a, what a fucking scene. Imagine what that strip must look like in Ibiza. What, is, what does it look like after the scene, after the peak season? It must be an absolute horror show on the streets. Or are they or are they really on point with making sure they have like street stewards and the cleaning team come in and just make sure, you know, they just absolutely blitz that place every night. It must be full of vomit and sh piss and shit. Like, God bless those cleaners, man. They might, they've, they've probably seen some stuff, innit? Um, so, uh from May through October, around a dozen venues host parties seven nights a week, scrapping over the biggest acts to pull the biggest crowds, which is a recipe for disaster. I, pr I promote events. If you do that, your night is dead. It says here, everything from tickets, drinks, merch, and accommodations are astronomically expensive. The winners are inevitably the ones with the deepest pockets, which is a recipe for disaster in the long term. It says here, followers, uh, over the last few years now, Bifa, things have gotten extremely commercial. Um, the whole scene is entirely reliant on international players, acts and promoters. A small local scene has always existed here to some extent has basically been eradicated. It still exists in the winter, but as soon as the summer happens, those guys disappear. The impact is that you don't really have a Balearic culture anymore and there isn't anything unique in Abifa in that sense. Yeah, that's the part that really is annoying. The lack of uniqueness in local scenes, especially the bigger markets. You go there and it's just the same DJs you see playing, especially for me. I'm spoiled in that regard because I live in London, but I would love it if more of these places I go to, sometimes even Berlin has that kind of problem where, you know, you're just booking the same people. I guess London does it the other way around because they want to make London seem a bit cooler. So they book these amazing DJs from Berlin and try and make it the Berlin vibe or the Berlin crew, or they try and promote it like the Berlin way. It doesn't necessarily work the same way in it at all. You can't, you know, you can't kind of 
transpose an entire scene um, to a different venue in a different country, right? There's things that you can't even quantify, that you can't even put into words that kind of add to the magic of that thing existing where it is. So to, to think that you just put a lineup, someone's name on a lineup and think that it's going to work the same way, it doesn't really work that way. In my experience, I don't know about other people, but I would like to see a bit more um, emphasis on kind of promoting the sound that you kind of listen to locally I'm sure everyone's got a local radio station that they, they tune into or local DJs and local heroes that they kind of want to promote why not do that um, I always harken back to the kind of story when it's in Nicaragua and I was bummed out to just hear them playing fucking Drake and shit you know at their clubs over there fair enough it was mostly an expat party but come on man I'm sure these guys have amazing local reggaeton artists they can be promoting or people making cool electronic music promote their stuff first I don't want to just hear the, some, the same stuff I'd be hearing if I went to fucking Living Proof in the middle of Nicaragua. That doesn't make any sense, does it? Anyway, continues here. It says here, Hector Avila and Carlos Villa, um, who DJ together as two Villas, oh, wow, are linchpins of the community. As well as DJing, they run parties and own a record stop in Ibiza um, called MTM, specializing in the deepest strains of house, techno, and electro. With all the up-and-coming gigs cancelled, they're living off online sales from the shop and using their spare time to organize small events with their friends, and many of whom are DJs and producers from Ibiza. That's what is going to be happy that's going to happen throughout the scene i think i'm happy to see that small local events with your friends and family because everyone's going to be so happy to be outside right no one's going to care who's playing they're just going to want to be outside drinking doing drugs hanging out with their things and pointing in their air and shuffling no one's going to care so if you can actually cultivate a lineup that's actually good it's going to make them come back right and then it's going to make them bring more friends and you're going to build a whole little scene and community so you're going to have all these little amazing little pockets of scenes building up all over the place and then once the international borders open up and everyone's allowed to kind of come in and fly in some guests you can then add the cherry to the top of your party right by booking a couple of big headliners in there and i'm not saying do away with the big acts but let's add them as little treats on top let's not make film the whole the whole lineup is like unannounced guests and they're all fucking people that you heard of a resident advisor let's have some underground kind of people and then add some big names on top of it anyway since continue to say we'd like to do some events in the open air this summer because it's open air in a week or two we should be able to have 50 or 60 people into events in a row wow awesome two people up a little bit if they won't let us throw big events at the moment we've got to start with a barbecue and then let the party evolve from there that's a really great idea i didn't notice that it says here the duo have been speaking um with some of the main venues if these parties happen there will be small and cheap entry and low price low drink and lower drink prices amnesia has already made moves in this direction right so on the bigger clubs selling 45 pound tickets which is cheap right no, which is too expensive. But in Ibiza terms, that's cheap, which is nuts, isn't it? Because, you know, 45 euro tickets is like print works and shit, right? That's the kind of stuff that they charge, isn't it? And you've, you've seen the kind of crowd that goes to print works. A bit dicey. So if that's the cheapest, imagine what they are regularly in Ibiza. That's insane. So 45 t it includes five drinks, which is pretty cool. Uh, the last time he said I was there in 2017, a bottle of water was 10 euros. That is insane. He says, yeah, I think I'd be a good for the club to get back to a bit of their former essence, their sound and identity. Avia, who was born in Ibiza, he says the first time he went to DC 10, age 13, he broke through the window of the toilet, so it definitely wouldn't happen anymore now, innit? Those security guards will legitimately kill you. He said, these past few years, you're more or less here, the same thing everywhere. Let's see if by working with local artists, who knows, who are less known internationally, the essence can return to the clubs, which is the vibe we have in winter. Yeah, awesome. I'd love to skirt that beef in the winter, actually, isn't it? But yeah, check it out. It's a long article. I won't read the whole thing here. Uh, it's titled, Could the Pandemic Burst I Beef's Bubble? It's on Resident Advisor right now. Check it out if you're that way inclined. Uh